And we're back. Hello, everybody. Tits, Kevin. And Brian. With the, the Horror Guys podcast. Episode 62. 62. We saw something old, and we saw a beautiful trilogy, and we saw a short movie. We're going to talk about all of them. Yeah, that beautiful trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> it's something well this week we're going to discuss some more great mostly modern horror mm-hmm. we'll see the human centipede first sequence from 2009 part one followed by the human centipede 2 full sequence from 2011 and believe it or not there's a third one the human centipede part 3 final sequence from 2015 and stuck on there to the end of that playlist was a short film called Play, Pause, Kill from 2020. Mm-hmm. And the ancient antique classic Secret of the Chateau from 1934. Yeah, that's kind of a golden oldie. Yeah. Not even golden, it's just okay. black and white. Gray, a silver gray, a silver gray oldie. Yeah. Black and white and blurry all over. Mm. Yeah, well, it's kind of, yeah. Well, that's a lot to talk about. Are we ready? I'm ready. Let's get to it. Here we go. First up is Secret of the Chateau from 1934. It's not the secret, it's just Secret. Secret of the Chateau. It's a secret. It's a secret. So what was this movie about? Well, this one was directed by Richard Thorpe, written by Lawrence Blockman and Albert DeMond, stars Claire Dodd, Alice White, and Osgood Perkins. There's not enough good actors named Osgood. Osgood. Not anymore. I've never met anybody named Osgood. Or Osbad either. So these are these were well known actors at the time. They're not, you know, household names now, but No, no, they big, were big big names at the time. Universal you know, always went but, for the and they were fairly big people at the time. So, some of them were uh, silent actors that had made the transition to uh, talkies. Nineteen thirty because it was it was that time where talkies were kinda new. Three now. years after Dracula and mm-hmm. Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Talkies had been around for six or seven years mm-hmm. probably. Yeah. Still a newish idea. Newish, yeah. So anyway. Well, in this one, a man arrives at an auction. The Duke has died, and his possessions are being auctioned off. Inspector Marotte comes in and asks the auctioneer about the auction. He says the old Duke was murdered, and he warns that the auctioneer might be in danger. A man walks into the shop and asks how much the auctioneer would pay for a Gutenberg Bible. Mm -hmm. While the auctioneer works up a quote, he goes into the next room to watch the auction. His friend comes in and bids 25,000 francs on a book, but he thought he was only bidding 25 dollars. 25, 25 francs, not 25,000. Yeah. Yeah. Do I hear 25? Because, yes, you know. Yeah, all right. They're all speaking English, but they threw in, you know, French things. Yeah. yeah. So he luckily managed to get out of it. Somebody finally bids 25,001 or something. Mm-hmm. The man, yeah. De Brunet, talks to Julie about his Bible, and he invites her to come over and see it. Hey, baby. Hey, you come want over to see and my see Bible? my Bible? <laughs> <laughs> that was transparent, wasn't it? She sees the police coming and runs off, and she puts something in his hand. Marat confronts Julie about her past. She did six months for art, art theft, but she still denies that she was guilty. She tells the waiter that Marat is a famous murderer named Prahek, and they all grab him while she runs away again. Oh, look, he's the murderer over there. Yeah, look, look. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. A policeman runs up and says a famous book was stolen from the auction, and either a young lady or two young men must have done it. Julie or De Brunet and his friend. Hmm. Later, Julie admits to her friend Lucien that she had the book in her possession all along. She wants to quit stealing books, but he threatens to turn her into Marat. I've been trying to give up stealing books forever. It's hard to do once you, once you take that first one. That's a... It's a slippery slope. Yeah, it's a Mm -hmm. a small path. Mm -hmm. Lucien mentions that he knows where to get a Gutenberg Bible. A rich man recently died and left it to his young nephew. These things are all over town. She goes to see Mm -hmm. Bardou, the executor of the dead man's will, and he says it's his decision on whether or not to sell the Gutenberg. De Brunet comes in and shows her exactly where the book is stored. Dee Dee comes in and steals Bardot's toupee, which causes a bit of a scandal. And it's stored in a, are you going to talk about that, where, where it's stored, how it's stored, uh, the com- complicated case with a alarm on it? Where, oh, yeah. Where Go they, ahead. Well, it, it's, uh, 
well, it almost looks like an old style um, record uh, player, That's like a cedar chest kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, cedar chest kind of thing. Uh, and it, in addition to it locking, it has an alarm hooked up on it. So if anybody opens it, a very loud bell will ring, and yeah. the, the household will be alerted that no one you know, can steal so, this. So no one's going to steal this Bible. Clearly, it's an impossible yeah, job. It's impossible, and yeah. Uh, they all sit down mm. for dinner, and we get to know who the various characters are for a little while. After dinner, Bardu opens the cabinet and takes out the old Bible, demonstrating the alarm. Yeah, he only he knows how to disable it. And, you know. yeah, Julie claims it's a fake Bible, so the old man pulls out the real one from under a hidden panel. Mm. He's got the real one with a fake on top of it just for a distra- uh-huh. dis- you know, yeah, a further, distraction. Further level of security. They're all worried about that local band of book thieves not to be in the area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch out for that. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the night, they all hear a bell ringing. The old aunt says, there's an old legend that says if it's ringing is always followed by a death. Yeah, it's not the alarm bell, it's a bell Yeah, bell. like a gong. Yeah. Bardu sleeps with a key on a chain around his neck. Suddenly, a shot rings out. Lucian comes in and secret, secretly and hides in the house. The next morning, Bardu is dead and the book is gone. Hmm. Inspector Marat arrives and immediately recognizes Julie. She says she tried to steal the book, but someone beat her to it. Huh. Marat thinks Ooh. the villainous prey hack is behind it all. He gets everyone together at the breakfast table and goes over everyone's alibis. They catch Lucian outside with the book but it turns out to be the fake one. Uh Marat thinks the aunt has the book since she has a key as well. The bell rings. Dee Dee screams as she finds the aunt's body. The group gathers in the library for Marat to reveal the murderer. Whenever you're invited to the library after a murder, stay home. It's never good. Well, if you're innocent, you got nothing to worry about. Well, the bell rings again and now Dee Brunet goes missing. It turns out the bell ringing this time was just a distraction so Professor Rock could hide the book. The old professor is really prey hack. The bell rings again, and they all gang up on the old man, tearing off his fake beard and wig. Good thing they were fakes. Mm-hmm. De Brunet comes back into the room, having figured out how the bell was being controlled. Marat is thrilled. Prey hack will get 30 years, and Lucien will get 15. He hands Julie over to De Brunet and claims that they get a life sentence together. A romantic ending. Did you like it? It was okay. It's all right. Yeah. A lot of drama over books. A lot of drama. The roaming, yeah. the roaming band of book thieves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, very dramatic. Well, it's not a comedy, but it does have a lot of funny moments using mm-hmm. salad dressing to oil the kitchen door. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot that was about interesting. that. Yeah. They couldn't get the uh-huh. door up because it had salad dressing. Yeah, it was it. all squeaky and... Yeah, and so yeah, give me some of that salad dressing. It's got oil in it. <laughs> it's a house with 26 rooms and only had a single bathroom. It was a different time. 1934, lucky they, they had, had one bathroom. Real good. Yeah. <laughs> Marat is a parody and caricature of caricature of every great detective ever shown on the film or written about. Mm-hmm. He knows everything, and he knows that he knows it all. Overall, it's kind of a parody of every mystery in an old house movie ever, with but, a little bit of Scooby Doo thrown in, with just the right amount of humor. But back then, it was new. It was these these tropes hadn't been done a thousand oh, times. I don't know. Well, I think even this had been maybe getting a little old by this point. But maybe, maybe not. Maybe not as old as it is, as it is now. Certainly. Overall, yeah. it wasn't bad. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of not bad, what else did we see? The Human Centipede. The Human Centipede. One. First sequence. Directed by Tom Six, written by Tom Six. Stars Deidre Laser, Ashley Williams, and Ashlyn Yenny. Runtime, hour and 32 minutes. 2009. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you like it? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah, I this did. This was too. my third time seeing it. I had seen the ending and cuts of this before. I had not seen the whole thing all the way through. It's one sick flick. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is. We open on Dr. Hyder, sitting in his car, looking at pictures of dogs standing mouth to butt. He arranges the photos to move the dogs closer and closer together to where they're overlapping. He gets out of the car and follows a man into the woods. He shoots him with a tranquilizer gun. Credits roll. Hmm. 
collecting specimens. Lindsay and Jenny, a couple of American girls, are on vacation in Germany. You know, I read some trivia that that was actually the last thing they filmed. The car? That opening sequence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why? Because of reasons. Cause, okay. Yeah. Didn't give a reason. Need to stretch us out was. another minute or two. It was. Well, they're out at night driving to a dance club and get lost in the dark road. Naturally, they get a flat tire. They leave the car and set out on foot across the woods to find help. They're American tourists in what is supposed to be Germany. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually filmed in the Netherlands, but it's, Netherlands. It's, set in, it's set in Germany, and the lead actor's German. And he's the only German. Dieter Laser. Finally, they find a house. The detectives weren't? No, oh, they were speaking like English, American. They, they, they sounded American, I think. No. I don't remember the they, no, they, they could speak English. I wasn't paying that close of attention. I, I, if they were heavy German accents, I missed it. Okay. Finally, they find a house, and guess who answers the door? It's Dr. Hyder. Doctor. Well, he pretends to call the tow truck and gives the girl some water, drugged, of course. They both wake up chained to hospital beds alongside the truck driver from the pre credit scene. The truck driver isn't a match, hmm. so the doctor just kills him and buries him in the garden next to his three-hound. <laughs> well, you want to experiment on animals first before you do it on people. But I think it was more than experimenting. <laughs> he really loved that dog. Even when he got the, the human mm -hmm. centipede later, he treated it like the dog. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hyder brings home a Japanese man named Katsuro as another prisoner the next morning. Hyder explains that he's the leading surgeon in separating Siamese twins, but nowadays... He's more interested in joining rather than separating people. Hmm. He likes to it's bring his people dream. together. It's his dream to make a human centipede. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to cut off their kneecaps and then sew them together, mouth to anus, creating a Siamese triplet, or as he calls it, a human, human centipede. centipede. Lindsay manages to untie herself and run. When he has her trapped, he explains that you will be the middle piece. Because hmm. that's the worst. Hmm. Lindsay goes back for Jenny, who is sedated. He shoots her in the back with a tranquilizer and begins the operation. Time passes, and the centipede begins healing. I did it! He <laughs> screams as he gets all teary-eyed with joy and kisses a mirror of himself. <laughs> He's a weird dude. He is a weird dude. Hyder makes them all go out in the yard and play fetch with him. Then he feeds the lead segment from a dog food bowl. Then the lead has to poop. And that means it's time for the second segment to eat. The third segment and only... And he's so excited when it's happening. Ooh, it's poop Ooh, time! Feed her! Feed her! <laughs> the director has to have some kind of poop fetish to make these films. It's gotta have it. It's wonder. mentioned in the third film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the third segment only gets what the second one doesn't digest, so it's all pretty nasty. Mm, yeah. Jenny, the third segment, appears to be dying of infection. As he examines her, the police arrive. They're concerned about someone hearing screams in the backyard. Hyder intends to replace the ailing Jenny with the two detectives, creating a quadruplet. Hmm. But they leave to get a search warrant before he can drug them. Yeah, he tries to give them some drugged water and they Doesn't don't work. drink it. Yeah. Well, Hyder is dealing with the police, the centipede gets loose. They cut up Hyder's legs and then slowly try to climb up the basement steps with Hyder in a very slow, crawling pursuit. Yeah, it's the slowest None of them come along. Yeah. During the difficult climb, Jenny starts to tear loose from the two in front of her. You rip. You. As they try Lots to break... you a moment. Since oh, this is oh, nothing but yeah, a ooh. Nothing but one big you. Yeah, yeah, one big ooh. <laughs> As they try to break out the window, Hyder crawls up behind them with a scalpel. Katsuro gives a long speech in Japanese about his bad lifestyle and God's revenge, and then... He cuts his own throat. The two girls, which share his circulatory system now, also begin to die. The one in the back died first. Well, she was already sick. Yeah. I'm not leaving the one in the middle. You got a dead piece in the front, a dead piece in the back, and a live and one a in the center. Dead doctor and two dead detectives, and nobody's going to come save her. Well, the police aren't it's a dead grim, yet. It's a grim ending. Well, then the police come back with a search warrant, and Hyder yeah. shoots them both, but dies in the process. They're all dead. Yeah, the two girls slowly die as well, connected to the still bleeding Ketsuro, with no one left to help them. Mm. The happy, end. Such a happy movie. Mm. They all die. Mm. Pretty much. Well, Dieter Laser is genuinely creepy looking guy, and he pulls off the crazy mad scientist with a lot of style. Mm -hmm. All three of the segments are wearing underwear, 
And I only want to know how they put them on in the first place. <laughs> if your butt is sewn to somebody else's mouth, how do you, how gonna, do you get how do you underwear, underwear on <laughs> to fit normally? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Well, the tagline was 100% scientifically accurate. Medically accurate. Medically accurate, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm no doctor, but I suspect that may not be completely true. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. Still, the mad scientist premise is shown in diagrams and slideshows and looks feasible enough in the short term. No one would survive long like this, but they might last a few days. Still, the tagline does say it's 100% medically accurate, so what do I know? Yeah. Yeah, it You're might You're no be. expert. They are. Overall, it's very well shot and decently acted. The gore is good, and the plot, well, silly, is entertaining. And I've heard so many bad things about this film. I thought it was pretty pretty entertaining. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. So do we see a short movie? Like one segment of a uh, centipede with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we've got a short film this week. It's called Play... Pause Kill from 2020. A nice bit of indie work. Did you like it? Yeah, I did. I did too. Mm -hmm. It was a good one. Directed by David Texera. Written by him also. Stars Lucas Doodle... Stars Easy Lucas Dutiliel and Anastasia Xatcha. Yeah, and forgive us for those pronunciations. I believe it was French. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that just mangled those names. Yeah. Runtime, 13 minutes, 45 seconds. And there's a link in the show notes. Check it out. You should check it out. Yeah, we begin with a woman, Julie, lying on the couch texting someone. She picks up a notebook and starts working on a screenplay. But she's not getting very far with it. The, the texting is in English, and it's mm -hmm. English subtitled. And there's really not that much but talking. There, so yeah, if you hate subtitles, it's all, it's all right. A little it's bit of right. French dialogue. Yeah. yeah. Okay, her boyfriend texts her back about watching a horror movie together sometime, and she thinks that's a great idea. He asks if the screenplay is horror-related, and she responds that, yes, it is. Hmm. He says he can bring a movie over that will inspire her, and she agrees. Her date finally arrives, and his name is Henry. He brings wine, and they drink a toast to her inspiration. She asks about his movie, and he brought along, I know what you did last summer. They never do get around to watching the movie. Instead, they entertain themselves in other ways. That's all we're going to say about that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. This is a French film with subtitles. At one point, while getting ready for her date, Julie gets out of the shower, <laughs> smells her <laughs> armpit, and makes a horrible yucky face. After the shower? After the shower. Yeah, that seemed odd. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I can't say too much more without spoilers, but the effects are good, the acting is good, the camera work is good, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's all good. If you mm -hmm. get a chance, take a few minutes to watch this short. It's worth it. Yeah, it is. And it's short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Very good. Speaking of good, we had The Human Centipede 2 from 2011. Mm -hmm. And I had never seen any part of this one before. I had seen this one before. And before we started, you said this was the weak one of the series. And I think I disagree with you. You do? You do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. I like them all, but this is one I like, like the least. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, he's something. I'll give my sequence when we get to... The, I'll give my full sequence when we get to the end. <laughs> he's something. Yeah, he's something. Yeah, he's something. <laughs> Lawrence R. Harvey, what a performance. He made this film. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. And then what'd he's you, in the third one you, also, and he's completely different. Yeah, what'd you call him a, a cross between the I, I, I'll get to it. I'll oh, get to okay, it. yeah. Okay. Directed by <laughs> and written by Tom Six, again, same guy, stars Lawrence R. Harvey, Ashlyn Yenny, and Maddie Black. So Ashlyn Yenny is the girl from the previous movie. She's in this one, too. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Harvey was not in the first one. And this is an hour and 31 minutes. Link in the show notes because you got to see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay, so we see the centipede from the first movie as the girls, two girls die. The end credits roll, and we see that this is actually a film being watched on a laptop screen by a nerdy little guy named Martin well, he works in a parking garage. So The Human Centipede 1 is a movie mm -hmm. within this movie. He's watching The Human Centipede 1, and he likes the movie. Yeah, this movie's real. The first one was just a movie. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what they're saying. <laughs> he likes it a lot. Mm -hmm. He goes out into the garage and shoots a young couple in the legs and then knocks them out. He pulls out his human centipede scrapbook and drools over it. Yeah, it doesn't take long Literally. to realize that he's kind of messed up. <laughs> Two, three minutes tops. Yeah, he quickly gets to yeah. it. He rewinds the movie and then watches it again. He's the Human Centipede Films' number one fan. Mm -hmm. Martin goes out and rents a warehouse space for his project. Mm -hmm. He kills the landlord, but then he regrets wasting the material by killing him. Soon we see that he has collected four living prisoners in the warehouse. His mother calls the psychiatrist to come over since he's been talking about a centipede with 12 people. The shrink gives some psychobabble reasoning, but he doesn't suspect what's really going on. He's sure it's just a passing phase. His mother, of course, just wants to die. She's weird. Yeah, she's weird. The man yeah. upstairs beats up Martin because his mother complained about the loud music. He studies the Human Centipede film, which is just a fictional movie, of course, but he figures out how to do it in real life. Yeah, he recreates the doctor's diagrams and he's studying. They look yeah. like the same diagrams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Traced them over the screen or something. Mm -hmm. He then captures a married couple but leaves their baby in the car untouched. He messes up the adults, but he, he, he likes the baby. He doesn't mm -hmm. kill the baby. He puts the baby back in the car and moves on. Mm -hmm. Throughout the film, Martin coughs, wheezes, and sweats profusely. He's clearly not a well man. He watches his favorite movie again, this time while masturbating with sandpaper. Yes, you heard that right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works, but all right. Works for him. Once. <laughs> <laughs> he then calls the agent for the actress who played Jenny in the first movie and hires her to be in his film, which of course is not a film, but reality. So he calls up the agent of the actress and says, you want to be in my film? And she's coming to wherever he is to audition for his movie. Now, you say that he calls. How we how we hear this is the voicemails that are left by the her people, you know, agent and so forth. At no we, point in this no entire dialogue. film do we see him speak. He has no dialogue. There's some yeah. muttering off screen sometimes that is supposed to be him. But no dialogue. We, no, we never see him speak ever. No. Not a yeah. word. Yeah. He, and I, he uses the phone, and we just hear his voicemails playing. And he's weird-looking enough and weirdly shaped enough and never speaks in this movie. I just assumed he was some kind of special kind of person that they got no, to do this. No, he's a very talented And then you see him in the third actor. movie, and he's just kind of a normal guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a little funny-looking, but he's a very versatile actor. And Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's very good. <laughs> You'd think this might be a one-off kind of role, but no, he's actually just a regular actor. And what was the director told him in the audition? Rape a chair. In his, audition, in his audition, what should I do? <laughs> Show me how you'd rape a chair. And you can see where that scene comes in useful here later on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never been asked to rape a chair. So anyway, he wants Jenny from the first film to be in his real centipede. His mother then gets on his case about his book and pet millipede, so he kills her rather thoroughly. Why does she? Does he kill her thoroughly? He yeah, sets up the body later, and you can a, see a hole right through her head. And he's got a great big nasty centipede pet. A pet one, yeah. Yeah, that he feeds bugs. And, a real yeah, live one. It's a vicious, a vicious stinging, biting, poisonous one. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah and and speaking of the, I don't know if you'll mention that later. It, it's in black and white. Uh, they filmed it in color initially and decided on black and white because of so much gore in this. There is so much blood and gore. and Yeah, the mother's death is just one instance of gore. Yeah. You got blood and you got Beatings lots and lots and, of poop later on. Yeah, that too. Yeah, it'd be red and brown everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so happy with his work with his dead mother, he complains about the loud music again on purpose and then knocks that guy out too. Mm -hmm. No more bullying for Martin. Nope. He packs up a bunch of duct tape and staplers in preparation for his surgery. Martin's a bit messy. He kills as many people as he kidnaps for his project. He kills another group in the parking garage, including his own psychiatrist. As he walks out of the garage, he passes the car with the baby still in it. <laughs> it's probably been four or five days by now. The baby's still sitting there baby's crying. Baby's still crying. Yeah. 
Jenny arrives, thinking she's auditioning for a Quentin Tarantino film. <laughs> Whack. And Martin's the driver. You yeah, know, yeah. Taking him to taking her to the audition. <laughs> she gets whacked, and now she's tied up on the floor with all the others. Now it's time for Martin to assemble the centipede. And the way he whacks them to knock them out, it's it's amazing that any of them survived to Crowbar, wake up again. Whack. Yeah, yeah, this is his end. Nobody's getting up this, after he that. He doesn't use a tranquilizer dart like the doctor <laughs> did in the first one. <laughs> The doctor, the doctor version, the first one is theoretically possible. This, mm. no, he's gonna have a bunch of dead people. Yeah, but it's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. First, it's the crowbar anesthesia for everyone. Once it quiet down, quietens down. Martin <laughs> knocks everyone's teeth out with a hammer. That was cringy. Mm-hmm. Lots of cringiness in this. Yeah, there is. Yeah. He cuts their knees in the same manner that he saw in the movie. Not being a real surgeon, he connects the people together with staples and duct tape. Mm-hmm. Busta still, faces. Still, it's not long before Martin's dreams come true. He has his own centipede, just like in the movies. And he's brought to tears, tears of joy. Yeah. <laughs> of course, there are problems. Yeah. They won't eat. They won't poop. They scream too much. He gives them all laxatives and watches the carnage. Just the seals the, with the staples aren't surgical like in the first chain film, reaction, so they tend to leak a little bit. Chain reaction with all of them, yeah. 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 It's, it's something. And then things start getting beyond Martin's control. Mm-hmm. So this was in black and white, which was an odd choice. Like you said, it was just too gory. They had to cut it down to black they, and white from color. Yeah, the, yeah. Or at least that's the story. That's the story, yeah. And the film is totally worth watching just to see Lawrence R. Harvey show us just how creepy a human can be. Mm -hmm. This guy looks like the Batman's penguin mated with a frog, only he doesn't have any makeup or prosthetics on. He is awesomely weird and doesn't say more than a word or two in the entire film. Yeah, he's got an odd physique and very kind of bug-eyed. I think that, I think it was enhanced with makeup, the, bu the bug-eyedness. But but he's an odd-looking fellow. Yeah, 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 he is. Yeah. A little offbeat. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah. Speaking of a little offbeat, yeah. that takes us to the third movie. Hey, Dieter Laser's back. The Human Centipede <laughs> 3 final sequence from 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, written and directed by the same guy, Tom Six. This one stars... Theater Laser from the first movie. But not as a doctor. No. Completely different character. All different Unrelated. Characters. Lawrence R. Harvey from the second movie. <clears throat> and Again, as a completely different character. No, and no. Eric Roberts, who needed a paycheck. Hour and 42 minutes. Yeah, well, what... Yeah, I, I, I would have liked to have seen his reaction, you know, when they approached him for this project. <laughs> Eric Roberts. How much? How much? And, you, and, you, and they do what in this movie? <laughs> And he just goes through the whole movie looking like he's in awe of what's going on. He doesn't believe any of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even the character. Mm hmm Okay, so it's got the villain from the first movie and the villain from the second movie, but the they're actors. not the same characters. No, not at all. Yeah, unrelated to the... Yeah. yeah. We watch Martin stumble out of the warehouse. It's the end of the second film. We pull back, and it's yet another film being shown. This time it's being watched by Warden Bill Boss and his assistant Dwight played by the guys who played Dr. Hyder in the first film and Martin in the second film. Their prison has one of the highest turnover rates in the country. And the bookkeeper, Dwight, has this idea that he keeps trying to present to the warden that involves these He's not human centipede movies, and the warden's not listening. No. The warden has the most German accent I've ever heard from a so-called Texan. Well, he says he's a, a German. He, he he mentions that that he's a he's not an American because he because he kind of makes fun of Eric Roberts being so ultra American and and he's you know he's he's not an American really he's a German a German naturalized German. He said that. Yeah, he did say that. Oh, I thought yeah, he was just a Texan that. with a bad German no, accent. No, no, but it's funny because he's got the German accent, but also a the Texas accent, and all a that. Texan accent on top of it. It ends up being kind of weird. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. <laughs> yeah. He's hard to understand in this. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't so bad in the first movie. He really plays it up in this one. Yeah, he's he's topping it with Texan, and so. the shouting doesn't hurt either. <laughs> yeah, he bellows a lot in this one. <laughs> oh boy, does he. <laughs> yeah. He demands respect, and he doesn't care who he has to hurt to get it. He wants to bring back medieval torture for prisoners. He has some really interesting new ideas in prison management, all involving pain and torture. 
Dwight, the assistant, keeps trying to explain that he knows how to solve all their problems, but the warden won't listen. The warden is, in fact, one of the most over-the-top, hilarious lunatics I've ever seen on a horror film. Mm-hmm. And there is a lot a lot more humor in, well, the first two really had This no, whole movie no is a joke. Yeah, this was very much just yeah. entirely spoofing itself. You know. The first one was a good concept. The second one was going for a total gross-out. Mm-hmm. And this one is just sort of a parody of the first two. Mm-hmm. Dwight, on the other hand, seems almost ridiculously normal after his performance in the second film. Mm -hmm. Again, he's just a normal guy. A bookkeeping accountant guy. Yeah. 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 And after that... Yeah, that second one, though. That was so (laughs) weird. (laughs) Before long, they get the word that the governor is coming for a visit this afternoon. This comes after the boiling water waterboarding session. The governor doesn't like Warden Boss, and he wants him gone. He'll return in two weeks, but he wants to see changes at that time. So we watch the warden waterboard a guy, cut off one's testicles before strangling him, break some arms, and other fun stuff. Just general brutality. Yeah. Yeah. He keeps blaming the heat for all the violence. He wants respect. All he wants is some respect. (laughs) Dwight asks the doctor to watch the human centipede films, and the doctor says he already has. Oh, they're really good, he adds. The doctor loves them. Dwight finally suggests turning all the prisoners into a human centipede. How could criminals cause any more trouble like that? They wouldn't even need to have a library anymore. It's the ultimate deterrent to crime. Dwight then calls Tom Six, the producer and director of the films, to come and talk to the warden. He and the doctor talk, and the doctor says, Yeah, I can do this. Because it is 100% medically accurate. It is. Mm -hmm. Dwight suggests a few refinements that would allow for the release of prisoners eventually. Tom Six insists on watching one of the real surgeries. No research. Mm -hmm. They show the films to the prisoners, explaining that this is in store for them, and they go berserk. Yeah, they don't appreciate the idea. The prison staff finally gets that under control, and then the surgeries start. There are multiple teams of doctors working around the clock, but they finally finish. There's even an extra special amputee version of the centipede for prisoners with life sentences. And what they call that? The human... Millipede or human something. Slug? No. no uh, uh, human millipede? Something like that. Mm-hmm. But it was slightly different because they had no yeah. arms or legs. They just sort of laid there. Yeah. The governor arrives and the warden is ready for him. They go outside and see the human prison centipede. The governor is shocked and not at all impressed. The entire prison yard is one long chain. (laughs) Yeah, it's like the movie poster. There's one long centipede with like 400 guys in it. This is all just completely illegal and unethical. Then, on the way home, he has second thoughts and comes back. It's just perfect. It's exactly what he was looking for. A happy ending Mm. for almost everyone. Yeah. Unless you're Dwight. Um, Yeah. Or the secretary. Yeah, yeah, somehow or another, the secretary wound up in the middle of the centipede. Mm-hmm. We're not quite sure how that happened, but nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so ridiculously overacted that there's just nothing else that compares to it. <laughs> Dieter Laser just had no restraint whatsoever and seems to have simply said anything and everything that came to mind. Uh, and it You've heard me, of chewing scenery. It this guy me just how, gobbled it. How much of that was improvised or how, how much of an actual script did they give him or some, some of those monologues that <laughs> he spews so out? so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever he couldn't do a Texas accent, he just yelled louder. Mm-hmm. He just screams through the last half of this movie. A lot of bellowing. Yeah. Seriously, I could only make out 30% of whatever the hell he was yelling, but it was still all funny. Mm-hmm. It's the least scary and the least gory of the series, but it's easily the funniest. Oh, definitely. Yeah. This wasn't really marketed as, as, as a parody of the first two films, but it clearly was filmed that way. Mm-hmm. It's still fun to watch, but it's nothing like the others. I think number two was best. Hmm. I think number one was second best, and I think third was the, the least. Oh. See, I think number one was the best, and number two was the second best, and number three was my least favorite. Well, at least we're, uni- we're in agreement on the third being the least. But okay. all... No, my, the third was my second choice. Oh, you like the original least? The, the original, the first, I like the original the best, and then followed by the third one. Okay. And then the second one. All right, all right. Yeah, but I liked them all. One, three, and two. You, You're you, one, three, two, I'm two, one, three. And you viewers and listeners should see them too. 
Yeah, totally you should. They're, 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 mm-hmm. You hear horrible things about, oh, it's the most disgusting movie I've ever seen. Well. You know, this stuff doesn't <laughs> take hold a candle to the stuff we were watching last October. Mm. Necromantia. Yeah. <laughs> Necromantic. Wow. Necromantic. Yeah. I was thinking more of the bunny game and Serbian film. No bunny okay. game. Sunny, yeah, yeah, those two. That's our show. Yeah, it is. Thanks for joining us. Stop in during the week at horrorguys.com for to read all these reviews and good stuff there. Sign up for our mailing list. Check us out at, at Horror Bulletin at Twitter. And we have a Facebook group, Horror Guys Podcast. Check us out. Send a message. Let us know what you think of these movies. Yeah, yeah we'd love to hear your opinion. Yeah. And also, uh, next week we've got something special for you. We're going to take an in-depth look at Swamp Thing. A couple of movies and a couple of different TV series. We're mm-hmm. going to do a Swamp Thing spectacular. Then the following week, we're going to watch, back to our regular format, mm-hmm. House of Horrors. Horrors. Hor- horrors? Careful, not hor- not careful, horror house. Careful no. how you say that. One. House of Horrors from 1946. We're going to get all hyped up with 1965's Die, Die, My Darling. Mm-hmm. We're going to stop in for a bite with 2007's Hansel and Gretel, which was not the Hollywood version. This is Korean, I believe. And the, and then we're going to feel depraved from 2019. I haven't seen any of these yet. I have not seen any. I think I mm-hmm. may have seen Die, Die, My Darling when, when I was little. Mm-hmm. Too little to remember it. Yeah. These others I've not seen. No, I, I saw the American so. Hansel and Gretel, and that's not this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see you next week with Swamp Things. See ya. Woohoo! See ya!